Hello, I'm Taumich, and I'm now going to show you how to import your Blender files into the game Dota 2. Here I have made a fast object for testing purpose. I'll now show you how to import it into Dota 2. So first of all, we need to make our UV unwrap. To make it, we will first need to mark all the faces. And this is done by clicking Alt A. Now click down here and choose UV image edit. And to unwrap, click U and then unwrap. But there's also different kinds of unwraps. For this object, I'm going to mark all the faces and then unwrap them to the view. Do this by holding down shift while right clicking. And then, after marking all the faces, you just need to position your camera at the perfect angle. And then press U and project from view instead of unwrap. And now just move the generated UV wherever you want on the map. Then start making the other parts and do the same as before. Always make sure to have the right faces and angle to maximize the texture quality. When you're done, go through them one more time to make sure you haven't forgotten anything, cause missed faces will turn black. To create a texture, you first need to set up the image in Blender. This can be done by clicking New right there. Choose a name. If you don't know what size you need, then just choose 256 for both the height and length because that's what Valve usually uses for most of their items. This is what it should look like after pressing OK. And what we need now is just an ambient occlusion, and that's just a simpler shadow and highlight. Now check the ambient occlusion, change the factor to 8, and then multiply. Then go down to catch, choose approximate, then check ray catch and change it to 1. Now we just need to bake it. The only thing left now is to edit it in Photoshop. We can also preview in Blender, but I'll take that in another tutorial. So to export the UV map and image, just click image and save as image. Then choose your directory. In this case I'm going to save all my files in this map here, named Blender test. Then I'm going to do more, two more maps inside of it. One for the SMDs and one for the textures. And now we just need to choose the map to save the texture in. Name the image whatever you want. And save. Now let's open the ambient occlusion. The full texturing progress is pretty complicated, but for this tutorial I'll keep it as easy as possible and then make another one for more complex uh, texturing. And now we're going to export UV mapping. Click UV and then export UV layout. Now choose the same directory as you choose for the ambient occlusion. Name it UV layout and then just drag it over the ambient occlusion so that it makes this kind of picture. And now we're free to texture this however we want. Always start off by marking the worthless areas, then just paint it black. Then add another layer below the UV map and black area. Then click on the UV map and choose it to multiply, and then the ambient occlusion to overlay. And now we can start painting. I'll just take some random colors as an example of what we can make. Some green, yellow and red. Then we need highlights to make it realistic. I'll show in a later tutorial how to texture properly. But let's just make it fast this time. Just paint it however you want. So here is my finished texture. Let's add it into Blender now so that we can see how it looks like on the model. Just save it as a PNG file and remember where you saved it. Then just open up Blender and we'll start off by enabling texture in the preview. This is done by clicking here and then adding textures. So now we can see how it looks like with the textures on. By removing the light we'll illuminate all the shadows. And now comes the hardest part in the whole texturing process. To first make the normal and then the masks. So let's just start with the normal. The probably worst way to do it but also easiest way is by starting off by making a new uh, image. Instead of choosing ambient occlusion, choose normal. 
So let's just create a new image with the same uh, pixel amount as our color texture. And then bake. And now when we have baked it, we can see that it has a blue color. And this is the fastest way of making a normal, even if it isn't that good. I'll show you in a later tutorial how to make a real normal. But for now, save the file in the same place as you saved the color and UV map texture. And now we just need to make the hardest part, the masks. So to make the masks, we'll just copy our color image file and then paste it in two new files with the mask name in it. Make sure to end all your texture files with a bottom line and then normal or mask or color or whatever it was. But if you forget it, it won't matter much cause Dota 2 will point it out. So after saving all these files, open them up again in Photoshop so that we can start edit them. And here I have all the info on the masks, what they do and what their role is on the shadowing and highlighting of the model. I'll slowly follow it step by step here in Photoshop in this channel tab. These are the channels that the masks carry and that Dota 2 will read into something else. In almost all cases the two first channels in the mask 1 should always be full black and that's because those masks are made for very complex texturing. I'll perhaps learn you that in a later tutorial. Then save this file. And after saving, it's time to edit the mask too. This mask is very much about the lightning and how it hits the object. Oh, let's not forget to make the alpha channel to the first mask. I didn't show it in this clip, but it should be just like the blue mask but just a little bit uh, more grey, a bit darker. To better make the second mask, I input the anti-mage weapon second mask. In this way we can see how the channels should look like. And the only thing you really should care about when making the mask too, is to have the ambient occlusion and then just invert the blue channel. And since that's everything you need to know, I'll show you how the finished masks should look like. Note that this isn't 100% perfect. And here's the in-game adding of the item. When adding the item to Dota 2, I encountered one problem. The texture sizes was too big. So I needed to change them all. But instead of resizing it, you could just change it to the body armor or something, just for the first test. Now our object is compatible with Dota 2. And now we just need to specify where the hero will wear the object. So to import your SMD model, go to Files, Import, SMD. And now it's just to import the hero's bone structure. In this tutorial I'm importing Pudge's bone structure. So this will be a weapon for Pudge. If you don't have any bone structures, then I'll link to the files of Pudge from Valve's official download site. So here it is. Here you can see all the bones that Pudge contain. So let's just find the bone we are going to bind the object to. Mark the structure, click tab and right click on the bone that you want to know the name of. After finding the bone, click tab, mark your own little object. Now click here and choose Pudge as the parent. Then choose the bone that your object was supposed to be binded to. In this case the weapon right one. And now we can make small adjustments by pressing tab and then adjusting it. And that's how you choose how the object should be worn. Now it's time for the final import. Just do as the titles say and direct the right file. If you did everything correct then the import should be successful. 
and it would look like this. If the import failed, then re just read what the problem was, and if you don't understand what the problem was, then just leave a comment here and I'll try to answer for you. Thank you for watching, I hope you learned of this, and have a nice time modding! See ya next time, goodbye!